Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Today's topic is going to be differential diagnosis in cardiology. Let's start by talking about acute pericarditis and how you differentiate that from cardiac tamponade and constrictive pericarditis. In order to make the diagnosis of acute pericarditis, you have to order an EKG. And the EKG should have diffuse ST segment elevations across multiple leads. So if you look at leads 1, 2, 3, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, right after the QRX complex you'll see an ST segment elevation with upright T waves. And that's the key sign that you want to look for an EKG. In addition to the obvious clinical presentations of chest pain um, that's typically worse with deep inspiration and patients complain of coughing. Um, on physical exam you may hear a friction rub which is a high-pitched sound that has several components to it and the rub is often difficult to hear but you can hear it uh, with the diaphragm of the stethoscope as the patient actually sits forward at a forced expiration. So the differential diagnosis for acute pericarditis is um, any inflammatory condition uh, that can inflame the pericardium. Now another common condition that people confuse acute pericarditis with is constrictive pericarditis. With constrictive pericarditis you have EKG changes that have low voltage and nonspecific signs on the T wave and also the heart size is normal. Patients will have you know signs that are similar to constrictive uh, to acute pericarditis on their physical exam uh, but in addition to the ones such as chest pain they'll complain of signs such as orthopnea which is a key sign. Patients will also have things like ascites and edema, jaundice so again right-sided heart failure with orthopnea, JVD elevation, all these are key signs that this disease is going to be constrictive pericarditis and not acute pericarditis. And therefore, you know, it's difficult to distinguish uh, between any differential which presents with um, similar situation such as restrictive cardiomyopathy. Restrictive cardiomyopathy also has similar findings to constrictive pericarditis. However, in restrictive cardiomyopathy, the left ventricular ejection fraction is actually going to be decreased. And on the CT, you won't see the thickening of the pericardium. So those two things um, are going to be your key differential to your constrictive pericarditis and if the patient comes in with the right-sided heart failure symptoms with JVD elevation along with uh, signs of orthopnea then you're going to think about two things constrictive pericarditis or restrictive cardiomyopathy but restrictive cardiomyopathy the ejection fraction will be low and the CT will not show a thickening of the pericardium. Now, how do you differentiate cardiac tamponade from pericarditis? Well, in order to make the diagnosis of cardiac tamponade, you definitely need to look at the clinical symptoms the patient presents with. And the key sign here that the boards loves to ask patients and that is pulsus paradoxus. Pulsus paradoxus is considered to be a physical diagnostic sign that you need to pick up in order to make the diagnosis of cardiac tamponade and its definition is a decrease in the systolic blood pressure of more than 10 mmHg with normal inspiration and again the what happens in this condition is that there may or may not be a paradoxical pulse um, but again if that is present then it should also give you another clue that this is cardiac tamponade. 
Patients have decreased heart sounds, signs of fatigue, dyspnea, orthopnea, and keep in mind that when you order the echocardiogram and the cardiac catheterization, this will confirm that the left and the right atrial pressures are actually equal. Okay, so another key sign here. How do you make the diagnosis of cardiac tamponade? Well, the left and the right atrial pressures will be equal. And the treatment is going to be pericardiocentesis. With constricted pericarditis, usually patients benefit from sodium restriction and diuretics because it's a right-sided heart failure type of a picture. With acute pericarditis, the treatment will be focused on several things. Want to manage the inflammation, okay, and so patients benefit from NSAID therapy. So markedly different pictures for acute pericarditis, which again will have that EKG that's diagnostic. Cardiac tamponade, which will have pulsus paradoxus, and constrictive pericarditis, which has a right heart failure type of uh, symptoms, but the EKG won't show much, uh, and the thickened pericardium will still be there in order to help you differentiate from restrictive cardiomyopathy. One last disorder I want to talk about is pericardial effusion. Now, with pericardial effusion, it's basically an accumulation of a lot of fluid in the pleural cavity, but what causes it depends on what's in that fluid. So if the patient comes to you and says um, that you know they're complaining of the typical signs of right heart failure or congestive heart failure and you basically order the echo in order to diagnose it, you see pericardial fluid and on x-ray you'll see this water bottle sign um, characteristic of the cardiac silhouette and you decide to actually aspirate the fluid. When you analyze that fluid, and if you find that there's serosanguinous pericardial fluid present, that is a sign of tuberculosis. If you, again, analyze it and you find that that fluid contains blood, then you're looking at some sort of an aneurysm, possibly. So the fluid in itself will give you a lot of clue as to what it is. Also understand that if patients come in with CHF, hypoproteinemia, you're thinking of a picture of an effusion related from an exudate. Okay, so that pleural fluid analysis will help you make the diagnosis of the underlying pathology. That was a board review of the differential diagnosis in cardiology. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures. That's www.comlexflashcards.com and good luck in your board preparation.